All right, welcome everybody. Um, this is the uh, BSEP Info Night for 2023. Uh, my name is Joe Preston. I use he, him pronouns, uh, and I'm the chair of the BSEP committee this year. Uh, so you'll be hearing, hearing a bit from me this evening, um, as well as some other members of uh, the BSEP committee. Um, I wanted to mention before we get things rolling here that, um, you know, the Mazamas, the, the BSEP, uh, this committee, all of the climb leaders, we're all volunteers, uh, you know, with the exception of a couple employees uh, at the Mazama Center. But um, so just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody who helps make this uh, program happen. Um, it's a big uh, mountain in of itself to climb. So uh, just wanted to say thanks to everybody there. You'll see there will be some climb leaders in attendance tonight. Um, feel free to ask questions, uh, and we'll get started. So, um, as far as the uh, ex expectations, um, we're going to have you muted, uh, the questions in the chat, and then we have some moderators in the chat, and they'll pass uh, stuff along to whoever is um, whoever's presenting. Um, got a bit of an agenda here, so we're going to go through a few sections of this, um, kick things off here with uh, kind of just a short overview of the Mazamas. Um, if you don't know, we were founded on the summit of Mount Hood in 1894, uh, one of the oldest mountaineering groups in the country. Um, we've been instrumental in, uh, you know, the creation of national parks, um, you know, Crater Lake and uh, Mount Baker specifically. Um, we have also, little known fact, uh, we were actually part of the Mountaineers, or the Mountaineers were part of the Mazamas um, and split off in 1907. Um, the Mountaineers are essentially the Seattle area version of us. Um, Another little known fact, maybe, uh, the Mazamas have a lodge up on Mount Hood, um, government camp area. Uh, and that is accessible. Usually, uh, it's got some different um, kind of things happening at the moment, but um, you know, normally it's open to the public and members. Um, and then in 1950, BSEP, the Basic Climbing Education Program, started um, and kicked things off. We've, uh, you know, had thousands of folks come through uh, the program. Um, the Mazamas today, uh, we're a nonprofit. You know, we've got 2,600 or so members. Um, we offer a variety of climbs uh, in the region. Um, you can see some stats here. We've got, uh, you know, 2020 was a weird year, um, but things are starting to come back to normal. You can see uh, the trend there. Uh, last year, we had 182 climbing opportunities. Um, you know, we love to recreate in uh, the mountains, and so we really want to inspire everyone to love and protect the mountains. Um, this is a fundamental kind of core belief uh, in everything that we do. Um, got a couple of trivia polls for you tonight. I'll kick the first one off here. Um, we want to know uh, who which of the three of these mountains are known as the Guardian Peaks? Uh, we've got Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Jefferson, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, and Mount Washington. Cool. Floating away. So, um, all right, we'll wrap this one up. Um, let's 
You should be able to see the results here. Uh, the Guardian Peaks are Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Adams. Um, and that's relevant uh, for tonight uh, because the Mazamas, um, we have uh, we have some awards that we give. Um, one of the awards that we have is the Guardian Peaks Award. And so uh, as a client, as a member, when you're uh, climbing on our climbs, if you climb all three of those mountains with, on, with the Mazamas, you get the uh, Guardian Peak Award. Cool. So, Um, BSEP 2023. Uh, this year we have 19 teams, uh, which is going to give us an opportunity for over 200 students. Uh, we have 27 team leaders. So some of those teams will have um, a, a main leader and a co-leader. Um, and then uh, most of the teams will have, uh, you know, up to uh, what seems like an infinity uh, amount of infinite amount of uh, assistance at their disposal, uh, which is a great great part of BSEP is you will you will not only learn from your uh, instructors but also uh, the vast amount of assistance that continue to come back year after year and help with the program. Uh, each team, roughly. Uh, 20 folks. Uh, you're going to have, like I said, one to two climb leaders. You're going to have some assistants. And then each team is roughly 12 students. Uh, some of the teams have a couple less. Some of the teams maybe a couple more. Um, as far as COVID goes, uh, that's still a thing uh, we need to worry about. Um, so, you know, in indoors, we really encourage folks to wear masks. Um, and outdoors, if there's going to be, you know, close proximity, some of the stuff we do you know you're going to be close to people around anchors and things like that so you know uh, we always recommend masking up um the uh, bsep committee this year uh like i said before i'm joe preston i'm the committee chair um and then it we have a, a, just an awesome uh, group of folks this year who are all helping uh, in various ways to make this happen so i uh, just want to give a big shout out again to all of them they're uh, super amazing. Um, as far as the class goes, um, this program is really designed to get participants the skills they need to be able to climb with the Mazamas um, on what we call A and B level climbs. Um, some examples of, you know, climbs like that might be uh, Mount Hood South Side route, um, you know, uh, Mount St. Helens, Mount Eleanor, uh, just to name a couple. Um, these are entry kind of beginning level skills. So, um, you know, that's the level that we, that's kind of, kind of what we're looking for here. Um, this also gets you ready for uh, going into our other programs that we offer, which are a ton. Now, just a couple are the, you know, Intermediate Climbing School and Advanced Rock, um, but we have you know tons of others: canyoneering, uh, Nordic skiing, backcountry skiing, all kinds of stuff. So um, it's, it's really a great way to get into this organization. Um, sweet, and then uh, rock another trivia question here. Um, so for this one. Uh, what is the Native American name for Mount Hood? All right, sweet. I'm not even going to let this run that long because you all know it. Uh, it is. Uh, As most of you know, it's Y East. Uh, Siksikwa is Mount Jefferson. Lou Witt is Mount St. Helens. Tahoma is Mount Rainier. And Pato is uh, Mount Adams, one of my personal favorites. Cool. And now I'm going to shut up for a little bit and let some of these other folks uh, chat. So cool. Ryan, 
you are up for infinity. Infinity. Go. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Zubieta. Uh, I'm here to just give a quick spiel on the affinity groups here with BSTEP. So uh, every year we offer affinity groups to serve various communities in our area. Um, there's an opportunity when you apply for BSEP to request team preferences. Um, I want to note we can't promise any sort of team as Sorry about that. Uh, and we also strive to balance gender across each team. Um, if you self-identify with the community that is not listed on here, for example, a women only or a BIPOC team, and you prefer those demographics to be represented on your team, let us know. And what this means is we will try our best to assign you to a team with a higher representation of your preferred demographic. Um, we will not be forming additional affinity teams because um, we're sort of constrained by who's available to lead them. So a brief description on each team. Uh, first, we have the Latino team. So this is a team to foster community for those who self-identify with this group. Personally, I participated on this team last year and it was a stellar experience. Um, I'd be happy to field any questions about this team at the end of the session. We also have a weekday team. So most BSEP teams uh, run their field sessions during the weekends, and this group gives folks who don't have that availability uh, an opportunity to participate in BSEP. Finally, we have the LGBTQIA plus team. Uh, it's similar in spirit to the Latino team, uh, where it's available to build community amongst folks who self-identify with this group. If anyone has a question for this team, Joshua Baker would be happy to answer them at the end of the session. And one final thing to note that in addition to these teams, we're working on some programs that will better support affinity spaces outside of BSEP um, and trying to create affinity groups that exist outside of this uh, one course. So um, in order to support people who identify but aren't on an affinity team for this year's BSEP, we're trying to create continuity for some of those spaces uh, once the program's over. And with that, I'll pass it over to our friends at Peak Recovery. Cool, so, uh, oh, hold on. Sorry about that, Allie. No worries. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Allie Marie, and I am one of the co-founders of Peak Recovery, which is a new project of Alano Club of Portland. And we are so excited to partner with Mazamas to offer a free BSEP team for people who identify as being in mental health or substance use recovery. And so we're gonna be partnering with wonderful BSEP leaders and BSEP assistants, but this team will all be people who identify as in recovery and we'll have the sign up available on our website, which is listed below. Thanks, Allie. Yeah, we're really excited as well. Um, we should also uh, have a link on the Mazama's website on the BSEP page that we'll send you over to this. Um, cool. So then we're going to jump over to a uh, class outline. All right, that's me. Hi, everybody. My name is Melanie Potter. I use she, her pronouns. I uh, did BSEP in 2022, so last year, and um, I really enjoyed my experience and continued on with Intermediate Climb School, which I'm in right now. And then I will be volunteering um, as uh, an assistant for BSEP for this coming season. So hopefully um, I'll get to meet some of you on the team that I'm assisting for. Um, so, Basically, there's a variety of learning opportunities through BSEP. Um, we'll be doing online modules and breakout sessions. And as part of those online modules, there's also recordings of lectures. I really like this feature personally, because then I could go back 
to the recordings um, and view them later on uh, or refresh. Um, but I could also look at them on my own time. Um, so that worked out really well for me. Um, and the breakout sessions, we'll go over each of these in more detail in some future slides, but um, the breakout sessions are really about kind of diving in um, to what you're learning and learning sp specific skills. Um, there's also uh, several team hikes. Um, and so this is a great way to get some conditioning and get to know the people that you are on your teams with and your instructors. Um, there's also a series of technical sessions. These are awesome, um, both the indoor offerings and the outdoor offerings. These were definitely a highlight for me, and I'm assuming are a highlight for a lot of people that are wanting to apply to this um, so you can learn some new skills. Uh, and then they'll also be, to wrap everything up um, and just solidify the skills that you've learned, there'll be an online uh, test and also an in-person like practical skills test. Um, so now I think we can go on to talk about them a little bit deeper. So um, basically it's an eight week long class um, that runs roughly from February to May. So some teams will be starting in early or late February and some teams will be starting more towards the end of March. They kind of stagger them a bit. So not everybody's gonna be on the same schedule. Uh, and then teams will be wrapping up towards the end of April, early May. Um, so the technical sessions, um, every team will get to do uh, uh, intro to climbing session at the Mazamas Mountaineering Center, which is in Southeast Portland uh, off of Stark and roughly 40 something ish. I mean, you can Google it. Um, it's pretty accessible. I think it's close to a bus line too. Um, and then there'll be um, both rock and snow sessions. Um, the order of those will be kind of just dependent on your team's schedule of whether or not you'll do rock first or snow first. Um, and then uh, there'll be a skills wrap up climbing uh, review session at the Mazamas Mountaineering Center um, to kind of refresh um, before your practical test. All right, so we talked a little bit about the weekly lectures, lectures and breakout sessions. As I mentioned, um, there's pre-recorded lectures that you can watch on your own schedule, um, pause or start or whatever works for you. Um, and then as far as the team breakout sessions, every team will do these a little bit differently, um, but essentially you'll meet every week uh, and you'll go over lecture components for uh, the topic for that week. Um, and cover additional topics potentially depending on um, where you're at in the curriculum essentially. Um, and then you also talk about upcoming hikes and technical sessions that you'll be doing. My team, um, they went over skills and kind of reviewed skills in some of these breakout sessions and kind of introduced you to skills you'll be learning uh, on the weekend skill sessions or weekday skill sessions, depending on which team you're on. Um, and, the, and the breakout sessions are also a great place to ask a lot of hands-on questions and get demonstrations of things that you learned in the online um, materials. So um, it's kind of, um, they're meant to kind of feed off of each other, so to speak. All right, go ahead to the next slide. All right, team hikes. Um, so these were actually a highlight for me too. Uh, I I was actually a little intimidated by them because I was like, oh no, am I gonna be the slowest person? Uh, and that was like not a thing for my team because uh, our my leaders were just um, really good about trying to be mindful about pacing and kind of staying as a group and all that stuff. Uh, we did hikes all around. Um, like north, northeast, where, where we're at, north, northwest Oregon, essentially. Like, so we went out to the gorge, up to Mount Hood. I think we even had a hike out in the Tillamook area um, on the coastal range. So um, you might be kind of popping all around um, the, the area. Um, also, I just want to note um, that as far as getting to them, we, um, of course, this is like comfort with if you whether or not you want to carpool with people, but it was like my leaders set up like carpool sign up sheets. And so it was really easy to hitch rides with folks. Um, and it was a great way to kind of get to know people that I was in the class with. Um, 
So not everybody has to drive to these individually and get yourselves to like remote trailheads <laughs> in the Northwest. Um, and then, uh, you know, at, just an FYI, they're based on your specific team schedules. Typically, uh, they try to set up team hikes so that not all 19 teams are going to Dog Mountain on the same weekend or something like that. I actually learned about some um, new hikes that I had never done before. And uh, so that was kind of cool because my team leaders tried to take us in areas where they weren't already really popular hiking places because it's such a large group. Your team will be kind of a herd, um, which is actually kind of fun. Um, yeah, uh, next slide. All right, um, so the fun stuff, the technical sessions. Oh, one thing I wanna mention about the hikes is it's not just a conditioning hike. Some teams like will incorporate skills into those hikes too. So um, I would encourage you to go to as many of the hikes as you can like honestly clear your schedule for all the hikes because I learned a lot of valuable information and was able to talk with assistants and team leaders and other students on the hikes to kind of learn about their particular experiences. So um, it's not just us, you know, suffer fest going up the hill. Um, okay, so for technical sessions, uh, like I mentioned, there'll be um, a practical rock session at the Mazama's Mountaineering Center. We will get to practice on the walls there and kind of get used to um, what that feels like if you've never climbed before. Um, and then there'll be a technical session out in Horse Thief Butte, which is like out in the gorge toward past the Dalles. It's really pretty. It's it was really fun. Um, there's likely camping involved. I think most teams are going to be camping that weekend, uh, which is super fun too. Uh, and then there's also a snow session, which is generally up um, on Mount Hood, uh, either in the Timberline area or um, uh, White River. I think we had to do ours in White River because of weather. Um, and that's super fun. Um, so rock session, you're learning stuff about like belaying and rappelling uh, and rock safety. Um, and the snow sessions, you know, you're learning how to use your ice axe for self-arresting, uh, for glissading, um, learning how to use crampons, learning how to be a part of a rope team, um, and just general mountain safety. I mean, I'm definitely summarizing here. There's a lot more that's going to be happening, but in general, um, those are some of the main things you'll be learning in those sessions. Next slide. All right, so graduation requirements. Um, you'll definitely want to go through all the online learning materials. These are a great thing to refresh uh, to prep for the online exam, so to speak. It's not meant to be like really intimidating. It's more of like a refresh to kind of remind you of all the things that you learned. Um, you'll want to attend all the breakout sessions in order to um, graduate the class. Um, you'll want, you'll need to attend a minimum of three hikes, although I strongly suggest going to all of them. Uh, and then you'll need to participate in all four of the technical sessions. These are really like the meat of the content and like hands-on learning. So it's really vital that you go to all of these. Um, and then you'll need to pass the online and practical test. Um, one thing I would love to say is that you're going to get uh, as much out of this class as you put into it. So it's kind of up to you to invest in it uh, to the level you want to get out of it. And I strongly encourage you to take advantage of all of the learning opportunities because this is your like gateway to the mountains. I mean, what's for me? I think that's it for mine. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melanie. Um, we will uh, let's see the final uh, poll here. Trivia poll. So what year were women welcomed into the Mazamas as full members?
Cool. Nice. Well, uh, the majority uh, got it here, I think. So 1895 is the uh, uh, first year. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've been uh, really, um, <laughs> we've been an open group for a long time. Uh, Kind of cool. You can see uh, at our mountaineering center, we have photos and stuff of um, some of the first climbers uh, in um, Mount Hood you know, climbing in like wool dresses and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Um, all right. So, costs, we're going to slide it over to Rachel. All right. Hi, my name is Rachel. I am uh... Obviously, as part of the BSEP committee, um, I took BSEP last year in the year 22, and um, I'm also an ICS right now, and you will also see me assisting this year. It won't be hard to find me. I'm kind of obnoxious and loud, so if you want to come say hi at any time, love it. All right, so we can hit that slide. Is it you, Joe, hitting the slide, or can I actually hit the slide? You hit the slide for me. There we go. <laughs> Um, so cost for Mazama members, if you are already a Mazama member and you want to join, it is $525 and non-members is 600 at this time. Um, these costs simply also include the t-shirts and printed student manual. Um, you know, these typically also, they pay for your camping and your lodging. So those aren't things you have to worry about. Um, and then also the equipment that we use from the Mazamas, like the ropes, also our time in the Mazama Center as well. So those costs all add up to that. Um, optional is a textbook, The Freedom of the Hills. It is not required this year for you to have this manual, but it is uh, helpful. And it, if you are a reader, if you are a person who likes to study that way, I think it is a good option for you. Um, Gear are other costs for you. This is something that there is gear. We will go over in another slide on which gear you will be needing. And there will also be a gear list that will be sent out of what's required for you when you are accepted into BSEP. I highly suggest going to the gear night as well. People will help you with those options, um, especially if you are very new to climbing and you need to get that gear. And that those prices can range too. You can start from basic gear and go up and up and up to, you know, depends how fancy you wanna get. If you wanna get the, you know, $120 helmet over the $80 helmet, it's all in your choice. Um, and then transportation, there's carpooling. So we do have carpooling for you. Um, COVID can still be a thing. So it is, you can carpool, carpooling is fine. Um, I just suggest that there is open communication on what everyone's comfort level is. You know, make sure that if you're someone who um, has vulnerable people at home or you are yourself and you need to be in a carpool that has is wearing masks, like make sure you have conversations about that um, and that you're open with each other about where you need to be at that time. Because I know it's still a confined environment and um, we don't want anyone to get sick or, you know, hurt family members that might be in vulnerable places as well. Um, yeah, I think that's it for costs. Simple. <laughs> oh, financial aid, yes. <laughs> um, so obviously just pretty much reading off, we do offer a limited amount of financial aid to allow students to participate in this. Um, we would not, who would not be able to do this without financial assistance. So if you need financial aid, you are more than welcome to apply for it as well. Um, and is provided for the cost of the tuition only. We do not pay for your gear that you'll be needing, such as like a helmet um, and some other suggested things that you will see on the list and things that you will need on the list. Um, you can co cover up to 70% of the course tuition and based on your ability to pay. So it's kind of a sliding scale there. Um, and then the Mazama's contact with you, the amount of your financial aid award prior to acceptance into the basic climbing education program. So you will be awarded this before um, when you are accepted in. So there will be no like surprise you suddenly get 
cut, like charge the full amount or anything like that. Um, we will give you an acceptance of the financial award that you will be getting. And you will be able to look at the scholarship details and more information if you contact us at help at mazamas.org. Am I doing personal gear as well or is that someone else, Joe? I can do it. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Oh yeah, totally. Um, you can see how prepared I was for this. Um, so required gear will be discussed during the course. Like I said before, there is a list. And like I said as well, it depends on how much money you're willing to spend. You can get the $50 harness or you can get the $100 one. And I'm sure if you want to go get like an Arcteryx harness, you'll be paying a bit more than that. Um, but if you come to the mountain shop, the night for gear night, uh, it's super helpful. And that's also a place that like, when it comes to renting gear as well, like, you know, if you need to get mountaineering boots there, if you need to rent crampons, like that's a good suggestion as well, because those things can add up in the end. And when we do do our snow session, you're gonna wanna try out crampons. It's a great place to rent. Um, here's a, just an item cost list of everything that you will be needing um, or possibly needing most of it. Yeah, no, I'd say all of it, yes. <laughs> and um, these are just ideals for you. Um, obviously, if you have uh, detailed questions about the gear list, these are great things to ask on the gear night when you're more hands-on with people. And, um, and they'll be able to answer all those questions. These are in addition like, or required like personal gear as well. Like I highly suggest like getting rain pants. Rain pants are a very good option to get. And I hopefully being in the Northwest, you do have a raincoat. Um, if you do have these things, perfect. Um, Non-cotton base layers, also important. You don't want to be wearing cotton out there. It gets soaked, um, doesn't dry as easily. Just be mindful of that. Maybe get a couple of things you can. I promise you, if, um, if you have cost issues, like go down to Goodwill, you will find um, material there, especially like in the athletic section that you can get. Um, mid layers, hats and gloves or mittens, protective eyewear, uh, sunglasses will be important. So make sure you have those and, um, you know, just some other things like trekking poles, really nice to have. Uh, again, go to the gear night if you have a lot of questions about this stuff because it's super helpful. Next. All right, additional required gear. This is where we're gonna talk about things that you're gonna uh, need to rent. You can buy them on your own if you would like. You can have your own personal gear in the beginning. I did not myself. I rented because I didn't know what I actually wanted. Um, so it's good to try out different gear and like go and rent it. Again, I am a big fan of the mountain shop, but there is also REI and Next Adventure who also rent out these things and you can have them help you as well. So like when I would go and get my crampons my first time, I didn't know what to do. So they actually set it to the Mountaineer booth that I rented there. So it's pretty nice. Um, so check those options out. Don't go out spending a ton of money if you're getting into this because you don't, there's a lot of different things about gear and you might not know exactly what you need yet. And um, it's a good way just to test things out. And then also when you're trying on these things, you can also pick the brains of your leaders and your assistants, unlike the gear they have and why they have it. Yeah, I'd recommend not going out and like buying everything before the class starts. My team leaders had, we had like a gear chat. I went to gear night. I'm going to plug gear night. That oh, was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I like brought what I had and then had like, I mean, not like all the nitty gritty, but basically went and like talked to them about what I needed, especially like with the climbing equipment so that I knew if I could use what I already had or if I needed to get new stuff. And then, um, and then I just talked to, like you were plugging, Rachel, talk to the climb leaders and your assistants. And I honestly like use my eyes too. I'm like, oh, what are they wearing? And <laughs> got some ideas, but you don't need to have all the gear before, before the first day of class. Like your leaders will be pretty explicit as far as like what materials you're going to need for different skill sessions and stuff like that. Um, so it's going to be okay. Yeah, don't exactly 
there's no reason for you to spend a ton of money and like hundreds of dollars on this stuff. I know REI has like a stellar return policy, but you know, just try some stuff out. Don't stress yourself out too much and just like figure out what you like and like what you're interested in, you know, um, before you go out spending tons of money. Yeah. Visa package at the mountain shop. If you would like to purchase the required personal gear as a package, the Mazamas have partnered with the mountain ship to provide Visa students a discounted rate on the package, including all the required gear you will need for Visa. Mountain shop offers 30% discount for Visa students. So just make sure when you go there that you mention that you are a Visa student and that you're looking to rent gear because um, they will not know that you are right off the bat and they don't have it set in their systems usually right away um, unless you go to the gear next. So just make sure you keep that up that like you're like, hey, I'm in BSEP right now and I'm renting gear. Um, they're pretty stellar people about it and they're always willing to help you. Yeah, big shout out for renting gear. I rented my boots like every time we needed them and it was great. And it was a great way to know what boots fit my feet and which ones didn't. Oh yeah, because I had to try on like three different sizes. Um, yeah, and it's like it's not even about just like wearing it at that time. Like you have to like go up and down elevation and like up and down hills to like test out these boots and see what's right for you. And like some are more narrow, some are more wide. Like you just gotta figure it out. <laughs> Daniel, should I start in the application process then? It's all you. Okay, uh, my name is Dan Zalstowski. I go by the pronoun, pronouns he, him. I'm just gonna talk about the application process. Uh, the first thing, the important thing is the application will open on January 18th at 6 a.m. The application will close on January 25th at midnight. Um, this is how basically the, what I would say, the intake for all the people that uh, would like to apply to the BSEF program. I'm gonna cover, hold on for a second here. Yeah. I'm gonna cover some of the uh, topics that's covered in the application. Uh, some of the questions that we ask are, you know, did you apply to BSEP in 2020 and but were not able to take the class in 2021 and 2022? That's for the people that uh, may have applied for the COVID uh, year, but then was canceled. Um, have you also previously applied to BSEP, uh, but didn't get in or was it was accepted, but wasn't able to attend? Um, one of the questions also we ask is, I think what Ryan also mentioned, is uh, team preference and teammate pre preference. Um, indicate if you want to be placed on an infinity team um, and is it important to you. Um, also, please indicate if you have a teammate preference or a team preference uh, based on a leader or some prior knowledge. Um, we also have a part in the application process about our diversity, equity, inclusion within the Mazamas. So the Mazama aims to become a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive organization where everyone feels they belong. In order to broaden our community, we aim to better serve the needs of people and communities that have been underrepresented in mountaineering and or under, underserved by the Mazamas. Uh, let us know if you prefer to be placed on a team with similar individuals or would like to describe the type of team that, that you would like to ideally be placed in. Um, as BSEP committee, we can we can try to honor those requests, but we cannot guarantee them. And I think that should be a repeat of what I, uh, Ryan mentioned in the affinity team. Um, also, one of the questions we ask on the forum is about community engagement. Um, have you volunteered with the Mazamas? Have you uh, participated with, within any Mazamas activities prior? Um, have you engaged in any other types of stewardships or advocacy well, related to the Mazamas? Um, excuse me, mouth is dry. Uh, the other question also we have is about uh, fitness and outdoor experience. Uh, we asked a question on hiking speed, physical condition, and other relevant experience. Um, I, wanna, I wanna point out that we gather this data to create balanced teams. So please don't feel the need to embellish. We do not aim to create teams only with slower or faster hikers, or group people, uh, group people with similar experience levels. We really do strive to make a balanced team across many factors. Um, and also the application, the financial aid process is separate from the application, but because it is separate, um, we also ask you on the application, did you apply for financial aid? 
this way it just helps us to connect the dots. And um, like I said, the application will be open the 18th. Also, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions um, before you submit your application if something is unclear. But like I said, most of the questions on there are fairly straightforward. And I think that's all I have to cover on the application. Thanks, Dan. All right. Um, one thing we do want to stress is really, uh, please be certain about your availability. Um, we will list the team schedules on the application. So you will actually be sort of applying or like selecting the team schedule that works for you. Um, and, you know, that includes all the breakout sessions and everything like that. So, uh, um, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's an intensive course. Yeah, I, I think because of what I read off, I thought this was going to be hidden so you can skip these. I, I... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we're going to bring on uh, Ryan Abbott from uh, another one of our uh, many groups in the Mazamas, the Trail Trips uh, Committee. Um, they have some stuff to talk about. Hi, so if you were listening to some of the other speakers before, um, there's talk about like physical fitness and gear and preparedness. And so one of the things that we've heard um, over the course of teaching and assisting BSEP and talking to students is that there's a lot of apprehension over uh, physical fitness and how you get from the couch to climbing Mount Hood inside of eight weeks. And uh, that's kind of a scary, daunting task. And so what we're trying out now, you guys will be our, our focus group because it's not an official program yet, but we're trying out pre BSEP conditioning hikes. And this will be an opportunity for you to sign up for hikes that are running between right now and February 18th. And uh, some, of the, some of the hike leaders are running as they can put them in, and some of us are running a full series. Like I'm running a, a series of six hikes in an order where I'm actually teaching information at each hike and, and uh, increasing the intensity incrementally so that we can get you ready for your BSEP hikes. Uh, some of the things that we can be covering in there are going to be like blister prevention. We're going to be talking about gear that you need uh, and not like climbing gear, just technical layers. Um, and if you have to buy something for BSEP, we can make sure that it's good for BSEP too. So if you need a pair of gaiters, uh, the hike leaders will be able to talk to you about making sure that it's Gore-Tex and that it comes up to your knee. And that way you don't have to go out, get something for the hike, and then buy twice to go into BSEP. And so some of your gear will be prepared and then we'll talk about physical fitness and how you prepare for hikes between the hikes. That way you have a good system for uh, getting ready with your, your endurance, your aerobic, your strength and all that. And then if nothing else, you get prepared, you know right where you're at, you get a big jump on the climbing season and then you have a path to go forward from that point. That way you are not left behind, you are not lost and some of that nervousness about whether or not you can actually climb Mount Hood when BSEP is over, you, you can really gauge whether that's actually possible because at that point, you will have had like 14 weeks of training, 14 weeks of possible training opportunities and that, that should put you over the top. And that is all I have for you unless you guys have some questions. Uh, I should probably mention that you can find those on the Mazamas calendar. That would be a good thing to mention. <laughs> so sign on to the mazamas.org, go to the calendar, and if you filter by hikes, then you can see. Uh, the space on these is limited, but if you, can, if you can't find space, you can either email the leader and ask if there is, if they can get you on, or you can get on any other hike that the trails program is offering, and you can still at least get some hikes in. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. We're really excited uh, to that you, that you all are uh, running this program. Um, another program I uh, wanted to mention, um, some folks in the chat um, and Q&A have had some questions about, you know, hey, I have a little bit of experience with, um, you know, maybe some backpacking and maybe a little bit of climbing, that kind of thing, rock climbing. 
you know, at the gym or something, you know, already. So um, we actually have another new course uh, called Intro to Alpine Climbing. Um, that's a great opportunity. Um, if you apply to BCEP, you know, you're not, you don't get into BCEP and or you have some experience already. Um, there will be info at some point coming on, on to one of the pages on our website. But in the meantime, if you have questions um, or interest, you can uh, email uh, IAC, so that's uh, for Intro to Alpine Climbing at mazamas.org. And um, speaking of mazamas.org, that's our website. We have a full calendar, uh, like Ryan mentioned, um, that, you know, that's where you can find all the climbs we have um, and programs we have to offer. Uh, classes, that kind of stuff. Like I mentioned, you know, just a few uh, programs beyond uh, the basic climbing school are um, we offer advanced rock, we have backcountry ski touring, canyoneering, uh, we have a family mountaineering program. We offer a variety of first aid courses, including uh, wilderness first aid certification. Uh, we have the intermediate climbing school, which is sort of the step after BCEP, there was a question uh, if BCEP is required for that. Um, it is not. There's just a certain set of skills that you need, and there's an introductory test you need to pass, a skills test. Um, we have leadership training. So um, myself, I am in the leadership development program, uh, training to become a climb leader, um, and started in 2019 uh, with my BCEP team. Uh, that's when I started climbing. So um, you know, we're always looking for new leaders and um, want to grow and keep a diverse pool of folks. Um, the leaders are the folks who end up teaching the BSEP teams. Um, we also have some, uh, let's see, Nordic Ski School. Uh, and then there's a, a steep snow and ice uh, program that is uh, coming back. Um, the other thing, keep your eye out on the calendar because we also offer skill builder classes. You know, there was like a Jim to Craig class this last uh, summer, I believe. So there's all kinds of stuff. You don't have to be a member to do that. Um, and uh, whatnot. so, yeah, we offer all kinds of programs. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, Alpine Savvy, uh, John Godino. Uh, runs the Alpine Savvy website. He is a uh, Mazama climb leader. Um, he has been running a Sunday skill builder session. So again, Mazama's calendar, you can find out about uh, those details. And then, um, you know, you visit uh, John's website, alpinesavvy.com, and there are a literal mountain of free resources, um, you know, tracks and um, maps and you know, he posts on Instagram and stuff all the time, tips and tricks and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, check him out. Um, he does it all for free and uh, volunteers. All right. So that brings us to uh, the end of Info Night. Um, if there are any questions, we're hanging out to answer your questions. Um, please feel free. Drop them in the chat. Drop them in the Q&A. Um, again, those important dates are uh, the 18th of January. The applications will be live. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you pick the schedules that work for you um, because that, again, is important information. Uh, let's see. Joe, I think it's worth mentioning. I didn't really say mm -hmm. this when I was talking about like the course. This is a time commitment. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it takes a lot of time. You're, you know, it's pretty, in, it's a pretty intensive uh, course for eight weeks, you know, um, so just keep, keep that in mind. Like, don't be planning vacations in the middle of it. And like, it's probably, you know, be ready to kind of like be doing a weekly breakout session and things most weekends. Um, so I would say if you are committed to doing it, just clear, clear your schedule and be available. And sometimes things change, things might need to be adjusted. There'll be probably some like weather holds or something like that. Um, you'll be doing hikes in, sorry, what Joe? No, there won't be any weather holds. There weather well, should be perfect every <laughs> Uh We, we order, pre-order the weather. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's everything's going to be sunny. No, no, it's not going to be. Um, you'll likely get wet. You'll be hiking in the rain. Um, but it's fun. And you learn a lot about what works in your system and what doesn't work. Um, but just just know, like, a hike's not going to get canceled because it's drizzling outside. Um, but that's also part of the fun. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melanie. Still got questions coming in. Excellent. Thank you all so much for your time, for coming out. There's going to be a recording of this um, that will be posted on the BSEP page on the mazamas.org website. Um, we're really looking forward to you all applying and uh, getting involved with our organization. Thank you. Peace. We're hanging out to answer questions. So anyway, not actually leaving. Yeah. I, th I think there was a question about when do students get notified? Um, based on the calendar, I believe that is uh, February the 9th or 8th? February 9th. I think I answered those. Okay. Yep. And it looks like maybe some folks said that they've already started an application. I'm not 100% sure that that is the correct one. So what I would suggest is maybe hold off until the 18th and then uh, check it again. Um, I apologize if you have to, you know, re-enter any information, but um, don't want, we want to make sure you get in the right uh, spot. Uh, like, sorry, what? No, I just say it looks like Casey had a question about reiterating the dates for the sessions. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that those are outlined on the application. So you essentially choose the teams that you the dates work for you. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, uh, there's a good question about what is the major differences between BCEP and the Alpine course? You might talk about that for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, here I have a little cheat sheet I'm going to pull up uh to give you some more details but um so uh there are different prerequisites and structure from BSEP but the same learning outcomes so um with once you get into our website and and whatnot we have badges that get um you earn and and you know so once you complete BSEP you get your like intro to rock and intro to snow badges and stuff you get the same badges with intro to alpine climbing. So that's where the outcomes are, are the same, just a little bit different style. Um, no lectures or textbooks or meetings. It's only in field work. Um, it's a smaller kind of instructor pool, um, small group of students. So it's a smaller team, um, fewer number of field sessions. Uh, there aren't conditioning hikes, for instance. Um, and uh, they're gonna be operating from May through October. So, uh, you know, our program starts essentially March 1st and will run through May. When our program wraps up, theirs is kind of kicking off. So, um, you know, just so you know. There they are also going to have um, an LGBTQ affinity team uh, offered this year. It's the, so it just started last year. Does that uh, does that get your question there, George? Cool. Um, and Mino, I don't know the Intro to Alpine application uh, timeline, uh, but uh, or the dates, but you can email um, IAC. Get that in here. Um, IAC at Mazamas, Mazamas.org. One of our long time, long standing uh, climb leaders, uh, Matt Sundling, is the uh, head of that right now.
um, and know the uh, uh, Victoria, the IAC course is going to run uh, after BCEP. So it runs from May through October. Uh, more of an instead, I think, uh, kind of an and or uh, there. You, you same outcome, two different paths to that outcome. Oh, Daniel, uh, our website, mazamas.org uh, slash BCEP, I believe is the, yeah. Drop that in here. Um, Monica, different cohorts, I believe. I don't think it, it it's a shorter, shorter class than BCEP. So, um, uh, do, 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 let me see. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. So yeah, sorry. Still kind of working out all the details of that program. Cool. All right. Um, well, if there are no more questions, then I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and um, let you all get on with it here. Appreciate your time again. Um, be well, everyone. Thanks a lot.